So have you ever wanted to learn a new language? I know I have, and I suck at it. I can barely speak English as a first language. So <sighs> I have no idea why I'm trying to do this other than I think it would be fun, interesting, and beneficial to me in the long run. I've kind of dabbled in it for a few years. I'm kind of sort of determined to learn Morse code. Being the impatient, uncommitted guy that I am, I decided to cheat. So this time, we're going to talk about my CW cheating device, this time on K6 UDA Radio. <laughs> This is called the DMX-40 from PrepCom. And what it is, is a 40 meter CW transceiver with a built-in decoder for CW. So what the DMX-40 actually does, it is a CW decoder. And I kind of like to look at CW as just another language. And trust me guys, I have a hard enough time with English as a first language, trying to uh, add in Spanish or CW or math for that reason, and it's all bad. How does the DMX-40 work? What does it do? What's the whole deal with it? It looks, uh, looks to be a 3D printed project box. Let me take this off. It's got a USB input. It has two an audio input and a key input. Power in over here, antenna and a headphone jack in the interest of full transparency, yes. Uh, Eric over at PrepCom sent me this for a review sample. So uh, yeah, I did get the radio. What I, promi what I promised him was an honest review. Same thing I promise everybody who wants to send anything to me. Uh, I promise them an honest review. And frankly, that's why you guys watch me. It's not for my good looks. It's because if it sucks, you're going to know about it. I'm going to tell you. And I'll tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly about everything that I review, whether it's something that I bought for full price or something that somebody sends me. One hard button on the DMX-40 is the on-off switch. Everything else on this radio is pretty much controlled through either uh, touch screen to activate different areas of the radio or the included keyboard that uh, Eric says you almost need to use their keyboard. I don't know why. But uh, a lot of other keyboards, they're not going to work with the DMX-40. Um, this one will. So, hey, he sends it to you. You might as well use it. Now, something new in the uh, DMX world is the inclusion or the accessory of these pre-made up cables. And when you're using uh, the external mode, especially these cables really come in super handy. Uh, when I first saw the DMX-40, you kind of had to go out and make up your own set of cables. And uh, PrepCom had ways to source things, you know, on Amazon and everything. But now uh, with this, it makes it very, very clean, very easy. For the audio cable set, here's a, um, here's a, a one, a single to a double. And this comes in very, very important because this is the side that plugs into your DMX-40. And on the other side of this thing, this is a nice long, like six foot cable here. So the other end is two, uh, three and a half millimeter jacks. And one of these jacks, and it doesn't matter which one, is going to go into the uh, headphone jack on your external radio. And the other one is going to go into a powered speaker 
And we'll get to the reason that you're going to need a powered speaker when you're running this in external mode in just a minute. Now, the other cable you're going to need is another three and a half millimeter um, audio cable that's going into the keyer side on the DMX40. And one side's going to have this uh, phono jack here. And the other side is going to go with another nice long uh, cable. And I've got mine plugged into another adapter. And this adapter, this side here is going to the back of my 7300 in the key jack. What pray tell goes into this key jack? Well, a straight key can go on here and you can use your keyer to input CW into the DMX40 or through the DMX40 uh, and send CW out through your external radio. All right, now I am definitely not a guy who reads the manual. I just don't operate that way. I just jump right in and start uh, pressing buttons. But I'm going to tell you, uh, the DMX40 almost insists that you read the manual. And I keep going back to the manual. It's got a quick start guide. They also have other guides. And there's a huge DMX community. Uh, they've got a community page where uh, it's kind of almost like it's a constant development thing. And they're putting out new information. They're doing tweaks and stuff to the radios. I'm kind of wondering where this is going to go in the next few years. So when you turn the DMX40 on, you're presented with this screen. And the first thing you're going to do is you need to go in there and set up your local station. Uh, I've got mine set up. I'm Bob, K6UDA. I live in Twin Falls, Idaho. I've got a DMX40 and a 7300. That's my station, and my antenna is a dipole. I'm uh, an extra, and that'll come in handy when you want to transmit on the DMX40 because it'll only let you transmit whatever your license class is. Can you lie and say you're an extra when you're a tech? Sure, it's not going to know the difference. Moving right along, your VFO, um, your VFO adjust, you can go through and tell it how you want to do that. The help menu, the receive menu is very, very good. This will keep you from having to refer back to the manual a whole lot while you're operating uh, until you get used to it. Uh, your typing speed, this is going to give you like a, a short test and it's going to tell the DMX40 really what your base typing speed is and that'll come in handy when you're using the type ahead buffer. Megahertz memories. If you're a fan of uh, certain nets on HF or, or you've got certain frequencies and you set up, you like to set up schedules with other hams, uh, this will make it very easy. So if I wanted to go to like 7155 and, uh, well, if I wanted to operate CW on 7155, I could do it. And mind you, everything I'm doing right now, I'm doing right here on the screen. Microprogramming. These are macros. And I can set up macros for um, field day, for whatever I want, whatever contest I'm operating, uh, whatever. Over here, this is going to be uh, your default CW volume that it's inputting. And over here, this is your headphone volume. If you've got the headphones connected over here, um, I could set my, I'm set up to call CQ. I could set my, uh, transmit speed and I can go 20. So now it's going to call CQ at well, it's calling CQ at 17 words a minute. Now, if I want to uh, change frequencies here, I'm going to do that on the keyboard. And you could see with the number key over here, 
in the end, I'm moving that up. If I want to go with gross changes, big changes, I'm going to use the up key. I'm going to blank those out. Now I can move that frequency in bigger chunks. And I could go back down and I can move it in smaller chunks by doing that. If I say wanted to answer my friend WU6X, Dr. Bellin, I can just press the answer key and I could type again. There you go. Hit the escape key on the keyboard and I'm ready to decode again. It puts it back into, into the decode mode. Now, if I wanted to run this in the external mode, if I wanted to say, put this into, uh, into the mode where I can run 20 meters, and run it through my IC7300 or my 705, all I need to do is hit that button, hit the external, and it does that. That's human CW. And if I hit the escape key, um, machine CW. And the external powered speaker that I'm using uh, is this little gold zero that I bought 10 years ago. Uh, I've been using it with my KX3 for many, many years. I plugged the KX3 into this uh, when I was operating and it was much, much louder using the powered feature. It works, it works great with the DMX40. Uh, and you need to have that external powered speaker. So when you're dialing around on either the DMX40 or your external radio, you can kind of find the zero beat of the signal, figure out if it's strong enough and if you need more volume, whatever. And then you can use the RIT on either the DMX40 or the, um, or the external radio and get your 1300 Hertz. So now the radio also comes with this nice little cover to cover the screen. Um, one thing, if you're gonna run in an external mode, get a small little dummy load. Uh, these are on Amazon for like five bucks, they're nothing. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. 1300 Hertz on a radio, why? Why in the world do we need 1300 Hertz? I mean, the, uh, the ICOM 7300, you could put a side tone out there, CW tone, anywhere from like 300 Hertz to 900 Hertz. Uh, it doesn't go up to 1300 Hertz on the 7300. And I imagine it doesn't go up to 1300 Hertz on most other radios. So why? does the DMX40 use 1300 Hertz? Because according to Eric, uh, 1300 Hertz is high enough and enables enough bandwidth to decode CW when it's say like 30 to 40 words a minute. These are the, like the ultra fast, really good guys. If you're decoding at 20 words a minute, yeah, you could get away with adjusting the, uh, the, the decoding frequency down to 650 hertz. But after you hit that 30, uh, 30 words a minute, it's just not fast enough to keep up. So what we needed to do is pick a filter, a wide enough filter that we could get, say, 1500 hertz on that wide number one filter, which... If you're a CW guy, you're going to hate this. I get it. Don't bitch at me. Uh, but you need that wide, wide filter that'll get to say 1500 hertz and not reject those signals or not squeeze them out in order for the DMX40 to do its thing. So you find that filter, that 1500 hertz filter, you put your radio in CW mode, you've got the wide filter, and now you're gonna tune in to the frequency that you wanna to listen to. And you zero beat that frequency. You've, uh, in my case, I've got 650 Hertz. 
plugged into my 7300 and now um, I turn the RIT button on, press the RIT button on the 7300 and I adjust my RIT up to 650 hertz. Now I'm listening up higher or lower than the sideband or than the, the zero beat frequency that the CW is actually on. 650 on the radio, 650 on the, uh, on the RIT is 1300 hertz. And this thing will start decoding CW. It is like freaking magic, guys. That's all I could say. All right, now for the good, the bad, and the ugly on the DMX40. The good part is that, number one, I suck at CW. This is enabling me to get on a whole new mode for me and do CW. Why do I want to do CW? I don't know. Because this is the original ham radio language. This is, this will make it through when your voice won't, when a lot of things won't make it through. And if I ever really learn CW and learn how to do it, learn how to translate it in here, my whole world is going to open up. A few of the things that, that kind of bug me right now um, number one, in the answer mode, I was trying to do a QSO this morning. I, uh, I hear a guy call CQ. I answer him. He comes back to me and I go into, I go into the answer mode on the DMX 40. I start my typing ahead and now I can just type like normal and it translates it out to, it translates it out to CW wonderful, great, but I forgot to change the mode from the answer mode back into the receive and decode mode. And so I'm sitting there listening to this guy's CW on the radio and it's doing nothing over here. The tune light's not on. So I panic, I get all jumpy and I go back and I turn off the writ and I try to recenter the guy, turn the writ back on. I'm going through trying to do this. And then all of a sudden I figure, oh, I needed to hit the escape button on the keyboard. Well, it was too late. I missed the, uh, missed the call or I missed his return call. Tried to get him back. Couldn't get him back. Oh, well, um, I'll get used to that. It would be nice if uh, if Eric could update the manual or the quick start manual at least and put in how to set up that external radio in CW mode, well, at least the 7300, but I guess that would go for a lot of different radios. Uh, if you could actually just put that in the manual, put it in CW mode, find a side tone you like, add in the amount of RIT to make 1300 hertz, and put it in operate like that instead of how I was operating or trying to operate was picking or going into say lower sideband, listening to the CW, tuning it to what I thought was, well, where it was decoding, then putting it into CW mode and trans uh, and transmitting on what I thought was the proper frequency. And that was just, that was a hot mess. And now the ugly. There really isn't anything ugly. Um, it's a QRP radio. It's a full QRP radio. It is built in a, in a 3D printed project box. Yes, I get it. Hey, so are all the craft radios, they're kits. Um, I think these feet are about the ugliest part of this radio. Uh, these things, they don't fit well. I wish because it's, it does have, a, at least on the bottom, this little lock. Uh, I would like to see these feet redesigned so maybe they would come over the top of this thing and lock in on the bottom and hook in. 
I know that would add extra weight and extra bulk, but it would be a lot more steady. Figure out a way to get from that answer mode or that transmit answer mode back into receive mode where it ain't going to decode and you're going to be sitting there like an idiot trying to figure out some guy's CW, which in my case, I can't figure it out anyway. While we're at it, I would love to see uh, the, the whole side tone issue explained in the, uh, in the manual or in the quick start manual, because that's what I read the first time was the quick start manual. And that part wasn't explained in the manual. Another thing that I wasn't exactly happy about was when I was using my key and I had it hooked up to the DMX 40 and the 7,300 and I'm keying out almost anybody that has had any kind of experience with C uh, with CW will recognize even my poor CW skills with a straight key as calling CQ. Well, the DMX 40 is interpreting that as E's and T's for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, it probably is again, that 1300 Hertz something. But uh, as far as using this as a tool to learn CW and part of learning CW for me is learning that that mind hand coordination where I could tap out the letters that I need. Not much else you could do for the kind of money that you spend for this. Uh, the technology is pretty freaking awesome. I'm using this thing on the daily now. Uh, got it hooked up here in studio a, I've got it hooked up to my 7,300 and I'm playing on CW, um, like, you know, a couple of days a week. I hope this helped you. If you're kind of in the same boat as me, you don't know CW, you'd like to know CW. I think the DMX 40 is a great little tool to help you along your journey. Um, you know, I haven't learned CW yet, but being able to watch the words on the screen, listen to the tones that are coming out of the radio, has been a huge help for me so far. All right, guys, if this video has helped you out at all, if you found it a little bit entertaining, please give it the thumbs up. And if you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please hit the subscribe button now. And the most important thing, if you find any value in this, if you think anybody else will, please share the video on social media, whatever social media, whatever clubs you're in, because Lord knows YouTube ain't doing me any favors. Anyway, my friends, that's all I've got this time. Uh, please join me again. I will be doing some more DMX 40 videos as I get further along in this whole journey. Uh, anyway, you guys have a good one. I will too. I'm Bob, K6UDA, and I'm out of here. 7-3.